Christmas Miners, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson here with Rob Streche, powering through day two of Solanus Celesphere. Happy to be crewing the boat with you today. <laughs> oh, very nice. This is, this, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I look at this and I'm just so ex excited that we get to talk about things that really matter to these organizations as we go down the path in that river towards ultimate process utopia. I get beautifully, beautifully said, and I know someone else who loves to go down the river perfectly. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you. It's such a treat to be here. I love how you picked up on the whole rowing thing. We were talking about my weekend last weekend in Boston, where you oh, live. Charles, yes. And the head of the Charles. Charles. It was yeah. a fantastic weekend. It was very beautiful. Nice to get to Munich as well. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, can you row anywhere here? I mean, I'm trying to row uh, after Solons is over, after Solons is over. Munich is a really fantastic rowing city, and as a facility just 30 minutes south of here. I'm trying to go on Friday morning. Oh, fingers cool. crossed. Yeah. Anyone knows how to get me in there? Let yeah. me know. <laughs> yeah, well, you heard it here first. Yes. <laughs> VIP pass for Gary when it comes, when it comes to rowing here. This is going to be an exciting segment. You're enthusiastic about rowing, but you're also enthusiastic about process mining and about Salonis, one of the many evangelists here. Tell us a little bit about why you get so excited about process mining. So when I look at process mining in particular, what excites me is thinking about it in the context of transformation. Mm -hmm. So I use the analogy of moving house a lot when I talk about transformation. And if I think about Salonis historically, it's how do you renovate, streamline, and improve the living experience of the house you live in. If I look at system transformation, which are where I spend a lot of time, I'm moving house. And, you know, you don't want to take garbage from the basement or the garage to your new house that's in your old house. You want to build a new house that is what you need. And you might not have the appetite to renovate the bathroom in your old house if you're leaving. So what I get excited about is when you think about the investment that organizations are making in buying a new house and building a new house, using Salonis to take a factor-friendly approach to build what you need, be smarter about it, have good clarity on decisions and scopes. You don't redesign the kitchen three or four or five times and have lots of fights between the husband and the wife on what you really need but really get to where the information you're using can be an accelerant and, a, and an aid to make good choices. I, I love that. I don't think in the analogy. I'm, I'm going to absolutely... Steal uh, away. Steal away. Let, let me bring this down to something that was you know, mentioned in the keynote yesterday, which is the transition in SAP flavors. Again, it sounds, like, yeah, absolutely. It sounds yeah. like two different houses, and how do you... Op and, I, I, think, I think your background, you've been at SAP, and I have. I've actually worked on SAP uh, you know, over 20 years ago when I was working on an oil refinery. So, yes, <laughs> I, I coded in AVAP and all that stuff. But how do you see that transition? I, I think, again, what you were getting at seemed like, hey, people, you did it one way. Yep. Don't reinvent the mistakes you made previously or you know, hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars in consulting yes. to try and do it without understanding the process first. That yes. would seem like a key where you want to start. It is for sure. And, and you're right. It's a big investment and likely the biggest investment most organizations are making right now. SAP has put a deadline in 2027 to move to a new house for everybody. So in Y2K, we all moved house. Right now, we're all moving house again. So if you're an SAP customer, you're in this, thinking about it, doing it, it's all happening. And imagine your whole neighborhood moving at the same time. Lots of demand for movers. So if you do that, you want to be smart about it. So to your point, if I think about the strategy that organizations take, Greenfield is I want a perfect new kit house. I want a perfect new home. And I'm not making a decision to do it all for me. We're all going to move to the same house. Brownfield, I like my house. I'm going to pick up my house. I'm going to move it onto a new piece of property. Bluefield is we're all going to debate what we really want and pick our favorite house. So regardless of which you're picking, you want to know... When do we move? How do we move? How different is it for each of us? And we don't want to debate and argue about things that, like, you really think you like that movie room, but we use the one at the old house, like, twice a year. Or you really dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And so all those kinds of things become, what's the scope? And scope is what allows your comment of investment. If your scope is right, you can be on time and on budget. And with really expensive projects, you want to be on time and on budget. Now you speak about investment in partners. If I'm a partner and I'm your builder, I want you to have your plan right. I don't want you to change your mind midway through. And right. then magically it gets more and more expensive and you don't like me anymore as your builder. Mm -hmm. That's not great for me as a partner. You as a customer, you want to know that I've got good specs so I can give you a good bid. 
So everyone really wins when you have the right facts going in to know this is what we want, can we meet the timeline, what resources do we take, and, and like what's really interesting if you think about all the customizations you do to your own property, just like your systems, what Salonis can do that is really unique and special is say, what revenue does that custom code touch? What customers does that touch? So if I need to make a decision on changing it, well, should I, shouldn't I? Do I want that new functionality or is it just a gizmo? And how do I manage my customers so we don't go live and all my employees who are doing a new job go, oh, I don't know how to do this. And I've got unhappy customers and, and more problems. Continuing to slay the analogy game, by the way. I think you, you brought up a really good point. There's lots of shiny objects right now when it comes to AI, generative yep. AI. How is Salonis helping people navigate that water as they think about 2027 as, as a benchmark? I think what's really brilliant is when you look at our partnership with RDoc, you look at understanding AI, you look at the breadth of the landscape of your choices, yeah. like moving house. What do I want? Well, I want everything, right? And, and scope creep or boiling the ocean, all those terms in this space. You want to be as intentional and prioritization, you know, becomes key in terms of picking what to do now. Is my program one, three, five, seven, ten years? Am I doing a short lift and shift? Am I doing a full design? What do I want to include now, leave till later? You know, I'm going to move, I'm going to leave space to that pool that I'm going to have later on. Whatever the, the case may be. So when I look at those shiny objects, I think the gift that Sloanus brings is giving the quantification and the value to make the right choices. So instead of it being, what's my wish list and I like that? Well, here's my wish list and what's it worth? So what's it worth to me now? What's it worth to me later? If my project is six years long, I might want to do some improvements along the way that A, make me better and get me better prepared, but also save me money. Mm -hmm. And hey, who can't save some money? And similarly, if we say, okay, I'm going to get some more goodness when I get to that new system, so these improvements I'm going to do when I get there. So it allows you with Salonis to really see what's the right time to pick from those shiny objects where I'm going to get the most bang for my buck. Do you, do you, we'll, stay with the, we'll stay with the house analogy. So you have your main house and then you have your vacation house. And sometimes you have some... I don't know. I don't I don't know. We're dreaming about yes. this. So we're, we're going down this path where you have the two houses. In, in your vacation house, you have the kitchen of your dreams. Yep. And you, but your bedrooms are maybe not as nice or your main bath, master, master bath is not as nice or something of that nature. But in your main house, you have, you know, your suite that you love. Do you see people similarly looking at the systems as they're going through these transformations, saying, hey, you know what, I could actually have that kitchen in my main house and, you know, I could sell off my vacation house because I don't use it that often, but let's do this as part yes. of that transformation and bring the two systems yeah. together. A couple of really good points there. So one is in our system transformation readiness app, we can give a compare and contrast between your vacation house and your main house and whatever other house you've got. So you can say, what does this look like? What does that look like? What choices do I want? Which variation, which style is most, is most advantageous so I can take best advantage of that? So for one, you can pick the pieces and parts that you want and see the difference. For two, you can prepare for each accordingly. What I'd also say that's interesting is when you think about large organizations, what's right for one geography might not be right for the other. So the big fancy kitchen that's really good for your main house might not, or the bedrooms, might not be needed. So I'll take that to real life. I've got business in four geographies. But certain countries are my major businesses and other countries are my minor businesses. I don't need to over-architect for those smaller pieces of business. So what we're also seeing organizations do is right-size the small, medium, large t-shirt size of what the solution set is to bring to my major industry and, and geographies and businesses and my medium and my small. So by virtue of seeing what activity I have now, I can design accordingly and bring either what it is I need, as well as select the best to apply to my design going forward. Something that I noticed in, in our notes here this summer, we talk a lot about trust and transparency. I mean, we're talking about moving house, but when we're thinking about this, we're also thinking, okay, well, do I trust the information that I've gotten here? Or am I sure that this builder has my back and that this is the cheapest I could get this material or whatever that might be? 
we're talking about people, we're talking about processes, very sensitive, sometimes a very emotional process as well. I love that in here it says, facts are friendly. How do you perpetuate that belief across the organizations that you work with? Because I think that's mission critical, quite honestly. So I led change management globally for Coca-Cola Enterprises, which is the bottler for Western Europe and North America. So the alliance connection as well, this is all my I come I come from a change background, so all this beautiful technology, my litmus test is also how do people's jobs change. So there's a whole industry of building great houses. But living in it is where we really enjoy that house, right? Yeah. Building a great solution, employees doing it, and serving customers where it comes to life. Facts are friendly can make stressful, anxious, difficult decisions and situations so much easier to understand. And if I understand it, I can trust it. If I trust it, I can act upon it. So when you look at scope for these programs, you know, you've got business and IT and competing business demands because I think I'm special and different, you think you're special and different. We've only got so much to choose from, and who's going to win? Yeah. Well, facts are friendly, and you say, you think what you want is important, so do I. Which one of them is going to affect our customers, our revenue, dot, 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 to make those choices, which takes the emotion out of that debate and gives you the opportunity to align and track through governance and pace of the program back to you on scope, on time, on budget, and on value. It allows us to get that scope right, so we stay on time and on budget, and those debates become less. And when I think I have a special new toy that I want to add, we can figure out, does that feature really make sense or not? So you can talk about the transformation optimizer. I think that's what you called it. Justin. System transformation readiness app. Okay. But I like transformation optimizer. Right. They might need to use that. Maybe we'll store it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> T.O. But, yeah, T.O. But I, is this something that uh, potential customers or customers engage with you to use? Is it something they download? something they buy, how, what is this? Sure. So if you look at a lot of uh, solicitors customers now, some have an entire footprint of the organization, others have particular areas yeah. that they've got magic going on. And if you think about a transformation, you need to look at everything. You don't get to just move your bedroom. You have to move the whole house. And so the reno back to the renovating is improving the bedroom. If you're moving house, it's everything. The system transformation readiness app allows you to look across your entire landscape for the purpose of that move. You're not looking at necessarily mining and renovating every room of your entire house, nor do you have the appetite or time or budget or resources to do that, but you do need to scan and figure out what to take, what to do to make that move happen. So in terms of the, how you consume that, there is a skew, there is a way to consume that piece of uh, access, if you will, to Salonis that isn't process-based where every process is something you need to pay for separately, but rather looking at the system transformation as a whole. The Salonis process management, so the, the modeling side of things, also couples into that, so we can automatically model against that. We can also look at things like Process Navigator, where back to the user, not only can you use standard functionality from Salonis like Action Flows to say, hey, you need training, so we're going to trigger back training for you. Uh, Somebody this morning says more like a punch, but hey, you need training. Um, but also uh, unstructured data like policies and procedures, the things that I need to do my job, back to my litmus test of how my people's jobs change. How do you help me do my job? Which at the end of the day, the value comes from employees doing their job right and helping customers. I'm feeling great about it. I'm feeling great about it. Feeling, yeah. feeling yeah. great. And bringing us back to the boats and back to the water, I know you and I are big water level rises. We all rise together. Tell me a little bit about the, uh, the work you're doing with women in process mining. So a couple of years ago, Christine Hunter from the organization started Women in Process Mining. And if you think about process mining as a whole, Salonis has really introduced, introduced that to the, the world at large, like the, the market space has grown. And it's a new discipline that not everyone understands. And absolutely, abundance mentality and high tides all boats rise. Yeah. So if you look at Signavio and Salonis and mine it, and, 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 there's a lot of capability and wisdom that we can all bring to all of the organizations who are trying to get smarter around process mining, task mining, process intelligence. We bring our perspective, others bring their perspective, but together we can educate and lift students, organizations, et cetera. So some of the work we've done, I'll give an example. Last year, um, I did some work. I'm on the IT advisory board for the Georgia College of State University. Oh, fun. And they partner with the University of Munster as well as the University of West Georgia. And they do a class every year where the students solve a problem for a company. And Southwire, who happens to be a, a big SAP as well as Salonis customer, 
was looking at how do we take better advantage of all the toys we have. Yeah. And so the project we did was how might we, so design thinking, how might we improve the procure to pay in order to cash process. So we had 40 students from all of those organizations come together and they learned Salonis and they knew SAP, they studied SAP at school and Salonis at school and they worked with South Florida to solve against that. We then took, it happens to be that the woman who runs the program at GCSU is a woman. It happens to be that a lot of her students were women. We also had all of them come and speak to the Women in Process Mining webinar to talk about from student on through. We had the academy in, we had Southwire in, we had the teachers in, had the customer in, all of that. And you think about, for them, you've now started to lay a foundation at a student level. How does this help? So they, as a student, can go into any organization and say, I have experience looking at how to be smarter with how to run your company. So that's one example of really how do we start to bring together different generations, different knowledge. It's really powerful. It, it is, and, and it also gave, like we had them speak at the um, Global Women in Technology Summit, which for them is a huge opportunity to do this kind of work, which is new in your career when you're young, or new in your life when you're young. Yeah. So it's really, really exciting and fun. Yeah, it makes it, it warms my heart to think about the people impacted by that that mm -hmm. then believe they can have make change and do things like you've done with your career, but also really, like, to your point, we're just at the beginning of adoption of right. this technology, despite Will having worked on it since the late 90s, I think <laughs> it, it, it really is an opportunity, and, and, and we can feel it in this room. I mean, Rob and I haven't talked yes. about it all week. The process mining is having a moment right now. Yes, yes there's a huge hype curve around it's a thing. AI, but, it, but it's a thing right a thing. now, and it's not just in the shadows, and it's not just for the data science nerds of the world. It's, it's very much front and center. I think I wish people thought about optimizing their processes in and out of their professions all the time because it really matters to me in, in my brain. Okay, this is such a fascinating conversation. All right, I have one final question for you because we're just tearing through time. When we have you on the show at Next Cellosphere, mm -hmm. because obviously this is going to all happen again, you're way too great. It'll still be a thing. Yeah, yeah it, will, it will definitely still be a thing. What do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say yet today? I would like to say a year from now that every one of our SAP customers, as well as customers in Oracle and otherwise, are really looking at how to take the reach of the wisdom you get from process intelligence beyond a use case across their enterprise. And that really democratizes, to your point, the capability for every individual to look at how to be smarter at what they do in a way that is constructive, not only for themselves, but for their company and their customer. Beautifully stated more purposeful work, more excitement about that, and more time to do great things in your personal life. And Jerry, thank you so much for hanging out with us. My pleasure. Thank you. one of my you. favorite segments of the show without question. It's been quite a ride down the Charles today. Yes. Rob, thank you for hanging out as always and uh, and continuing to crush your back five and rows between two thorns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that's it. the first time I've been called Rose. <laughs> <laughs> more well, like Charlie, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. We're going to we're going to let that analogy just yeah. rest here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we are getting close to lunch time now, and I'm getting a little hungry. Oh, uh, woo, wow. Okay, Perry Rob, that was fantastic. Thank all of you for tuning in to the five interviews. We've already had five of 13 today, folks, here at Salonis Celesphere in Munich, Germany. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Mm -hmm.